Hey everyone and good evening. We are at the Gamers Assembly 2015 for the HWBot World Tour Europe stop. I'm Truthman from Overclocking TV and here is my guest Roman from Germany. Yeah. Hey. How are you? Great, it's well, it's getting late but I'm still feeling quite cool so I thought I'm gonna join you for the late night show. Perfect, perfect late night show. We are at Saturday night. It's, uh, it's 12 a.m. Yeah. So that's very late night show. Actually, for us, we don't see any difference between the day and the night, uh, yeah, except the noise around. Yeah, it's getting more and more quiet. So I think some of the gamers are... Maybe they, they finally lost their voice, or maybe they, they want to get some sleep as well. You never know. <laughs> so for the guys that are still here, welcome back. And for the new guys, we were talking about the, all the noise that the gamers did in the, the past few hours. Uh, we had a very hectic uh, OC show. Uh, just a few minutes ago yeah making sure that we can hear each other even if you are just across the table exactly yeah that was fun so here's the HWBot world tour uh, are you having fun so far yeah for sure yeah yesterday very very long drive I got up at like half past four in the morning and we arrived at around I think 10 p.m. because there was just traffic everywhere and I was really exhausted but today uh, yeah I started doing some just some relaxed overclocking. I brought a quite old platform, uh, H55, a dual core i3, and I, I actually pre bent the CPU at home and thought I will take the time here to uh, to tune it a little. Yeah, and I, I managed to break some world records. Yeah, you or, told me earlier. Like, yeah, so which one? Uh, w Prime uh, 32M and 1024M, uh, the global scores and uh, uh, the global top scores in dual core ranking. Yeah, are they, up, are they up on the Chevrolet bot yet? No, I didn't have time. So yet. you're actually just teasing that you broke them. Actually, Prove it! Prove it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good. it's a first uh, run which has been done uh, uh, below seven seconds on a dual core. Uh, the last record, I think, it, it was for it was up for over four years. So yeah, it's, it that's was a nice that's a nice takedown then. It was quite hard to take down this, this record, yeah. Uh, could you give us a bit more detail about what you were using at that point, like which CPU, which mainboard, which memory? Um, I used a Gigabyte H55 UD2H, which is, yeah, well, people think it's actually like more uh, HD PC uh, motherboard, uh, it's a micro ATX, so it, it was um, initially not meant for overclocking by Gigabyte. But I tested a lot of different boards, uh, mainly the P P55 boards like UD7, uh, which is meant for overclocking. But surprisingly, um, there are too many features on the board, like too many technical stuff, um, which helps back the uh, yeah the the BCLK overclocking. So I had to find a board with like as with the at the least yeah the least the, the least stuff on it. And uh, the Gigabyte H55, it doesn't even have like uh, a VRM cooler on it, like like really literally nothing on it. And um, but surprisingly, it's it's by far the best clockable board. Uh, you can overclock the BCLK from 133 up to over 300. That's awesome, especially for like yeah. a H series model. Yeah, mobile. exactly. Yeah, and you don't even have to do any vault mods on the on the board. That that's really surprising. Uh, the Gigabyte tool fully supports the board, so all you have to do is just install it. Mount the, mount the pot and uh, uh, the, the cold uh, the cold from the pot will, will go through the, the through the board so, so you we could on the VRM and yeah all, exactly everything. you don't even need a VRM cooler so yeah uh, yeah I'm sorry I'm trying cool. to fix the audio at the same time yeah but actually that board was like actually d quite cheap when they launched well it, it it's, it's been quite old but yeah um, well the, the board was always around I think 60, 50, 60 euros, it was quite cheap. Um, the issue is nowadays it's, it's really hard to find those boards. Finally I have like five at home or six. <laughs> oh that's why it's difficult <laughs> to find those boards yeah, because you, I, you bought I, them all. I bought like every, every every time I find uh, like one of those boards on eBay I just straight buy it. <laughs> <laughs> because you have to actually um, test each board because the BCIK overclocking not only depends on the CPU but also on the mainboard. So yeah, at that time there was still a chipset on the mainboard. Exactly. So uh, back back then, yeah, you, you were limited by the BCLK overclocking and not just uh, the CPU because there wasn't the, the CPU was not unlocked. Like you didn't have a, a full multiplier, so you had to go by the BCLK, and uh, that's why I had to to, to bin or pretest <laughs> CPUs and mainboards. So you were binning like the complete platform at the same time. Yeah, actually, I, I bought like I don't know, maybe like 100 or 200 of those CPUs on what? eBay, like over a very long period of time, like one and a half years. And uh, always, I always bought like 10, tested them, and kept the best two, and sold again. Um, 
I've been doing that for, for a long time. And then I got 10 really good CPUs and tested, tested each of them on LN2. Then I uh, went to use the best one, the best clocking one, to bin the boards, to check out is, is there any board limiting. So actually for, th for these records, it, it took me very, very long time preparation, like weeks, literally weeks. And yeah, you, you did that like over a long period of time. You didn't do, you didn't spend weeks uh, side by side. It's no, because it's you, need to, you need to get it when you can see it exactly, online. Yeah, you need to buy yeah. it, test again. Yeah, it's it's actually insane. Like the amount of work you you, you, you put in that. You were aiming especially at this CPU, this mainboard, yeah. to make sure that you break this record, right? Yeah, and exactly. I I had like the combination of the CPU and the board for like let's say two or three months laying at home. Um, either no time or I was just not in the mood to use this particular setup so I maybe rather use some SLE uh, but uh, last week when I uh, was preparing for, for the event here I was thinking what could I do so I, I thought well actually I could I could just spend my time here like relax really focus on, on this and just take those records and yeah it, it totally worked out I took two boards the two best boards unfortunately the first one died <laughs> Yeah. Um, so good well, thing you did one more. The, the issue is uh, the VRM is is not made for overclocking, right? So on the first board, they part, the VRM partially died. So um, if you put like eight one point eight volt on the uh, on the CPU on, uh, in idle, it was totally fine. But once then you, you go to load, yeah, from <laughs> load it dropped to like zero point nine volts, so like fifty percent <laughs> volt drop. <laughs> so yeah, that's not really really good. Yeah. So I I had to. Um, yeah, to scrap the first board and take the second one, prepare it. Uh, yeah, that, that that's that's crazy. So for all the guys that are watching, that don't get, that, no one can see the screenshot yet because you're just teasing. You you didn't post that online. So when you will post that online, that will come uh, a global uh, top hardware score. Yeah, um, and can you give more details on all the setup at once? Well, um, H55 UD2H, like I said already, from Gigabyte is uh, the main platform I use. Then I used uh, two memory sticks from Corsair, Dominated GT, uh, which have um, uh, Alpida memories on it, which are really, really good for clocking this specific platform. And um, the CPU was uh, Intel i3-540. It's surprisingly, yeah, not, not even the, the CPU with the highest multiplier for this socket, but I tested like each uh, CPU which was available on the market even with higher multiplier and and I figured out that the i3-540 is by far the best like scaling uh, CPU so you have actually a, a lower um, multiplier than the other CPUs but you can in the end still clock higher because it can <coughs> it can handle a higher PC okay and um, so initially um, I was aiming for around 6.5 gigahertz but I managed to do 6.7 today uh, stable uh, for W Prime multi-threaded benchmark, so I was quite that's, that's I was awesome. quite satisfied. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, do you think you still have some um, some room for improvement, or you pretty much? Uh, maxed yeah, I think out? so. Yeah, I didn't I didn't spend that much time. I actually just had the like the, the current record as a goal, and I, I just wanted to beat it, and then I stopped and I went on to the to the different benchmark. I'm sure if I try more, spend more time, then I'm sure can can improve the scores. I see. Um, you talk about like some issue with the like the PWM. Do you think you can remove this one and put like a power board? I on actually, it? actually planned it. I actually already talked to Visitor here. If you had a, a, a e power board here, for those guys who don't know what it is, uh, e power board is like an external power device. It's basically transforming the 12 volt from the PSU into any voltage you need from usually between one and two volt. Uh, you can use it for a graphics card. To for example the. At the moment, you have to do it for the NVIDIA GDX Titan X. Mm -hmm. Because um, it's, it's so consuming. Yeah, that you need some sa sadly, you know, it's a 1,200 um, megahertz, uh, 1,200 euro card. It's, it's really strong. Yeah, the, the performance is great um, for, for like stock overclocking. It's awesome. Even, even on air and water, you can, you can clock high even without increasing the voltage. But if you want to do extreme overclocking, uh, yeah, the card is consuming a lot. We have uh, currently uh, some issues with the e-power cards we use. Um, they are limited to 960 amps, and we have OCP on those cards. So uh, you have to you have to think about we're using uh, around 1.5 volt, and um, the OCP of those cards is kicking in at 960 amps. So in total, if you can calculate a little, it's going to be like around 1,500 watt just on the card, just what? on the Titan that X. Much? Yeah, and it kicks out because we can't. The, the the power boards we use are on the limit, 
So uh, that's that's currently the issue. So um, actually, if we see the TDX 980 Ti, which will come in the summer probably. Well, sometimes in the future. Yeah. Um, I didn't sign any 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 NDA, so. I didn't well, heard anything. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, if we will see the 980 Ti, which is like like a Titan with a proper PCB, say like that, um, they're gonna have the vendors gonna have to have really great designs on the um, on the PCBs to make it, it possible to overclock high. If you think about the 980. Um, because of the low amount of shaders, the power consumption was not really high. Even for for LN2 overclocking, it was quite easy to handle. Uh, but it, uh, the 980 Ti or the Titan X are incredibly high. They, they usually they easily can consume around 2,000 watt on LN2. Why yeah. I am not surprised. It's yeah. th these stuff are just way too insane. Yeah, it's 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 crazy how. Um, I mean, before you have to do that with the main board, like modify the motherboard to still overclock as much as you can, and then turn out that. <laughs> you have to do that for the VGA now because you you reached like the the power limit on that. Yeah. The, well, the issue is now that we have the, you know, we have the the card and then we know okay the PWM is not strong enough, so we remove it and replace it with an external power device. And then we then we realize oh the power device itself is not strong enough. So we're at the moment looking for OCP modifications for the external power device, which is like like stacking so up like the mods. Yeah. Mo modifying the modification you already made. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So do you think that uh, as this is the limit that we will see in the future some new revisions of this power card with like more beefy yeah, PWM support? I'm already working close together with those guys who are making the um, the power boards. They're they're aware of the of the situation that we are really limited by the power boards, and um, they didn't actually they didn't believe that 960 amp could could be an issue. I had to prove it to them. We had to like uh, uh, like film it and say yeah here. Uh, the card is consuming more than 960 amp, so it's shutting down. They were not believing this, but yeah, seriously, cards can consume over 2,000 watt. We were um, last year in summer. We were uh, checking a 780 Ti. I think it was a uh, Kingpin edition card mm -hmm. from EGA. The, the classified. Yeah, and uh, it was also an article for PC, PC Games Hardware. They wanted to uh, to do uh, an article about power consumption on, on overclocking. How or like what kind of um, PSU you actually have to use because now you have the 8-pack power supply with 2,000 watt people are thinking wow 2,000 watt it's way too much I can tell you it's not it's seriously it's Depend needed on the hardware you're going to use yeah, I mean, if, if you, you plug like a, yeah, a G3258 on it that's going to be way too much. of course yeah but four, if, if you do overclocking and let's say you have 4 graphics cards in it or even 3 those PSUs are really needed and we need those PSUs and uh yeah, like I wanted to say, the 780 Ti we tested, um, it had a peak load of 2,400 watts. We actually used two power supplies on the one card. Like we connected all the uh, the, the, um, the PCI Express cables with each other and put them all together into um, like one connector each. And then we had a third PSU for the mainboard and the CPU. So we had three 1,600 watt PSUs we needed to power the system. <coughs> People weren't believing that, but, but yeah, the peak load was t around 2,400 watt in Fire Strike Extreme. So that's insane. Yeah, insane. Just saying, you need strong PSUs if you do overclocking, proper overclocking. <laughs> I remember <laughs> that uh, when we did produce the, um, the video for ATGA, like in the, the 3D Eclipse, um, Vince was having like four 2,000 watt <coughs> EVGA um, Supernova. Yeah, and he was actually like booting one for the system and one for each card, and yeah. he actually had like one for the systems and one card, and then three others for the three different parts and I was like man that's way too much no no that's the, yeah, that's yeah, the limit yeah. actually if I could get one more I will take it <laughs> yeah exactly yeah people were like uh, that's so unnecessary uh, I one PSU can handle that by far not by far it not. always depends uh, on the configuration you have of course yeah. if it's just for gaming you don't do extreme overclocking that much or I mean yeah. only you guys I mean, I mean, honey, you guys doing like extreme stuff like this? Yeah, uh, but even we'll need that. you know, you know, um, there are a lot of guys who can actually really afford, let's say, a triple GPU system, and even then you hit limits like this very easily. So yeah, don't underestimate the PSUs. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> So that's uh, yeah, that's uh, I, I like to talk like this. It's more like a discussion than uh, and like a real Q and A and uh, question yeah. answer. Uh, by the way, yeah, if you have questions, shoot, we can always answer questions. Yeah, sure, sure. We are monitoring the live chat. Uh, we are yeah. seeing uh, jumper, 
119 uh, saying that I'm trying to find 1156 motherboard and I wonder what they all went where where they all went well now you know well they are in my room <laughs> <laughs> And uh, with the like Tiala, that was like a spamming, or I'm actually someone using Tiala's account spamming on the chat. Although we have a Cloud V2, maybe from India, as he was uh, referring to India a little bit earlier, uh, saying like two, uh, 2400 watts is damn. Yeah, that's insane. So don't forget, guys, we are still monitoring the live chat here on Twitch and uh, Dailymotion at the same time. Uh, Roman. You're actually doing your own uh, GPU container stuff and CPU containers. Yeah. Uh, but higher, you're gonna have something new to uh, to announce here, and that's like, that could actually be the official launch right now. Yeah, it's actually yeah um, uh, yeah it's it's a thermal paste. Uh, I wanna say one more thermal paste. Yeah. Well. The so what's 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 special? Why do you want to create a thermal paste with that? Well, after first of all, I have to say it's it's, it's not my own product, right? Um, like one, almost one year ago, I came across um, a Facebook site from a guy from Germany who wanted to start his own thermal paste company. And because I have always been into like testing thermal paste, because I think it's a very essential part of your system. Because with a very cheap product, you can you can gain a lot of um, uh, degrees temperature, um, like a cooler CPU, uh, just by buying the right product. And um, so I've been testing thermal paste for years, and I offered to him to like, if you have products, send it to me. I can test them and uh, give you some feedback. So I got closer and closer uh, with a guy from uh, Thermal Grizzly. That's how they are called. He actually, he's on the yeah. he's on the chat. I think he's he's on the chat. Yeah, I told him that we we're going to talk about it. So yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we got closer to each other and um, like talking a lot on the phone, and we realized that yeah, there's. There's a lot you can do, like proper testing about t thermal paste. There's a lot of stuff in this um, in this uh, industry which is um, not really true, like products which which are highly marketed as uh, amazing stuff, and then you test it, and it's, it it turns out to be worse than other products. Um, so we just we just wanted to have uh, like a really 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 good product because it doesn't make sense to have a just an average thermal paste um, entering the market it's it just doesn't make sense actually right? the, I think a lot of uh, people are asking the same questions uh, do you actually have a lot of difference in CPU temperature with the different thermal paste yeah well I can give you an example yeah um, I'm testing all, almost all thermal paste at, um, at my dummy load test bench I'm using for my website and um, I usually apply 160 watt load uh, which is which is quite common if you mm -hmm. if you have an I, latest i7 you don't even have to overclock it you can reach 160 uh, watt quite easily um, and that and then I measure with high precision thermometers um, uh, the delta the difference between like let's say the CPU and the cooler and if you use liquid metal you usually have a, a, t a delta difference of around six degrees and if you have a, a bad thermal paste it can go to like 20 degrees the, difference yeah and that's, you know that lot. that most thermal paste are around the same price most are like three to ten euros so there are people investing let's say 70 euros in absolutely high-end um, uh, CPU cooler like an air cooler and then they save money on the thermal paste and I tell them yeah you, you just you just gained two, two degrees by investing in a, in a sick cooler um, but you, you, you save money on the thermal paste and you actually lost a lot more there, so yeah, because of the combination of yeah, both, right? yeah, exactly. If if you really wanna wanna have the um, um, a good performing system, you should not save money on the wrong on the wrong part. So, so that's why I say thermal paste is an, an essential product of the system, and that's what we were aiming for, uh, providing a, a product which is performing very well, uh, which can be applied. Um, uh, very easily and um, also not too expensive, of course, because of course you can you could make a thermal paste for like 100 euro, which, which is like amazingly performant, but that's not the, that doesn't make sense, right? It's just uh, one part of the uh, <coughs> it has to, it has to, <coughs> So it has to it has to fit in the system. Yeah, indeed. So what's the name of this thermal paste and the company doing it? Well, the the company is called Thermal Grizzly, based in Germany, and um, I think you can see it. 
that's that that's the wrong isn't it this no, kind that's the one ah. that is like yeah ah, yeah one. so thermal grizzly uh you can visit the website thermalgrizzly.com and uh on facebook it's i think it's t minus grizzly and this specific product is called cryonaut um it's the the paste we made for um mainly for overclocking and especially for extreme overclocking um all the, the products um, we have are tested under like different um, circumstances. Let's say minus four, uh, at 40 watt for like HD PCs and 160 watt the normal test uh, stuff I do for for overclocking. But I also tested all of them on on liquid nitrogen. Also because of I did it for mainly for my for my own website for the reviews. I tested all the other p uh, products as well on, on liquid nitrogen just to co uh, to um, uh, to compare them. And that's how we came across this one. So you, you did test a lot of things before, right? Yeah, and um, yeah, that's that's the result actually, and it's it's a very very well performing paste. And um, how much does it cost? Uh, oh, the, may I, because that's the that's that's the first time you show that, right? That's the first yeah, time you show the yeah. retail package and, and everything. So how much does it cost, and where can we find it? Well, uh, at the moment you cannot find it yet. <laughs> Yeah, because it's, it's in Rosen. Hey, I found one! Yay, that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> because yeah, well, it's it's just uh, the product launch now, so uh, you will be able to find it at Case King, um, and I think some other um, shops might list it as well, which are linked to Case King. And um, from Case King, we can ship it all over Europe, for co of course. And if you have questions, you can also uh, contact Thermal Grissy directly. And um, yeah, I want to show the, the product quickly, I think. Yeah, you can do it. Um, I'm going to have the, the Yeah, let's change the right camera there. quickly. And, yep. All right, so basically um, just a just a bag, but um, it's uh, resealable. So you can you can just open it, like tear it apart. And, oh, that's a truly, uh, like, uh, easy opening then? Yeah, it's like, I, I really don't like the packages where you have to have... Uh, yeah, like a, a drill to open or something. <laughs> yeah, Some, sometimes it's really frustrating. And this one um, is uh, three milliliters around, uh, which equals around 11 gram. And uh, so showing. Uh, can you either have this one or the one yeah, below though? Let, let's use this one. So you can see the um, uh, the syringe, uh, tone grizzly syringe, uh, black, and. Um, so, let's go into uh, some nice. So, so in the package you're gonna get like a uh, like yeah. Let, this, let's just open like it. The yeah. Syring. So you have you have uh, the the thermal paste itself. This one is like 11 grams. Um, two applicators, uh, which I'm gonna show more in a bit. And of course the normal uh, a manual like uh, giving some instructions because um, RTFM. Yeah, the thing is, the thing is, you know. Uh, Hey to India. <laughs> uh, well, the thing is, when I when I tested um, uh, thermal pastes, I came a lot of I, I, I came across a lot of like questions and comments from normal users uh, reading my reviews, and I said, yeah, you you tell in your in your review that um, um, like a thermal pre paste is easy to apply, but I cannot apply it. It's 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 really hard. And then I thought of what what could they do like wrong like wh why is it uh, hard for him to apply it and easy for me and then I then I figured out that um, for some paste you have to apply pressure for some you don't have to apply pressure sometimes you have to spread it like slow sometimes fast so and for this paste um, you have to apply it with a, with a little bit of pressure and very slowly if you apply apply it very slowly and it goes very smooth. If you if you go like very fast, it's 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 hard to apply. That's why I say, yeah, the the manual is actually important. So it's it's very small, so you can actually read it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's so, other one thing. There's a lot of questions every time um, we are at this kind of show. Like some of the gamers come here and they say, hey, um, what is the best way to apply my terminal base? And I remember, I think that was you or one of your friend that did the the testing. Like, okay, do I put like one big uh, nuts of exactly, thermal base yeah. in the center? Yeah. Do I do like a slice and so on? And then yeah. I did actually test like a lot of uh, different yeah, ways. Yeah, I, to test, do it to I tested that. five different different ways, like a, a dot in the middle or five dots, like uh, on a dice and uh, like a, a cross, a circle, and everything, or like like completely applied. And for me, for according to my testing, there is not really a big difference, but. Um, 
I think you should apply it like on the whole surface just to make sure that um, it's it's evenly applied everywhere and you, you're sure that it covers the whole area. If it's a little bit too much it's not that bad because the, the high pressure usually from the cooler will, will spread it. So um, uh, there's a question uh, from Tullius I think is his name. Uh, he wants to know um, if it freezes up uh, like other paste at minus 100 degree. Well um, thermal pastes are made out of um, basically two things you have to have um, like the thermal conductive material which could be like diamond stuff aluminium oxide or ceramic stuff and then you have to have something which like holds it together and usually that's some some kind of um, silicon oil stuff and this silicon oil always freezes up at a, a certain temperature which is not a problem at all um, if you, if you do extreme overclocking, you need pressure from your container on the CPU. If you have that pressure, uh, it will like keep everything together and, and the, the, the cold transfer will be perfectly fine. There are some products which tend, we call it, it's, it's like cracking. Yeah, so actually uh, uh, the, the cracking effect is like when uh, you do that, it's like creating like uh, not veins, but... Uh, no, it's, it's actually, it, it, it means that um, if, you, if you have the, the copper layer from, from the CPU and you have the thermal layer above, it's like, it's like, like, like uh, going away, it's not sticking mm -hmm. anymore, so the thermal contact is not good. So I tested that as well. And um, yeah, for this product, it's, it's perfectly fine on Allen 2. Like the, the two records I did today are actually made with this product. So uh, I also gave some to Dan Kopp. Some guys may uh, know him from, from Germany. And um, I didn't allow him to, uh, to publish anything yet because it was still not uh, yeah, official. But all the scores he did recently, all the records were all done with this thermal paste as well. Um, yeah, I th I th I'm sure he will also post a bit more about this in future. Uh, It'll be interesting to to see. So let's let's so let, let's get a few more details about that. So let, let's right check here. let's check this quickly. Um, so if you take uh, take off the cap, this is the the applicator. Um, you should close it. This yeah. cam, right? Uh, so the, the applicator, um, uh, it's like a, uh, a rubber part, and um, you can. It looks uh, like the end of a vacuum cleaner. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. You can, the cool thing is you can screw it on top of, the, of the syringe. And um, if, you, if you like press the thermal paste, you can see it comes out there. And then you can like easily apply it on, on your CPU or your GPU. I really find this very handy. Uh, and yeah, well, the only thing you have to do is like pull, pull the syringe back so it's like sucks uh, all the stuff back in, which is uh, stuck in there. So yeah. And. Um, so you have you have two different one. What for? Oh well, the one is for just for spare. Oh, that's that's exactly the same one. You don't have to use one for GPU and one no, for CPU. No, no, it's, it's just exactly it's just one. a spare part. You know, we're doing the the IKEA principle. Uh, sometimes it's better to have more parts in it. <laughs> but you yeah. don't tell which one then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Actually, that uh, that's cool. That's the first time I see one of the thermal packs with like um, an applicator like this. Oh yeah, thanks. So we got a CPU here. Uh, Intel Confidential, I think it's some Pentium K. Uh, so, just just to, to show it, um, you can really really easily apply it, and you can see it's very that the paste is very very soft. It's it's not like other pastes which are uh, very uh, let's say like like like, like uh, look like most like a, like like a paste and uh, yeah. like, a, like a liquid. It looks almost like a liquid now. Yeah, this is like very very easy to apply, and that's what I meant. Um, go like very slow with a. A small amount of pressure and then it's re 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 really really easy to apply and just cover the whole surface and you're good to go yeah so no need to uh, take care anymore on how to do it that's a different way to uh, make sure that the thermal paste is uh, well applied just apply it everywhere and that's it yeah that's what i recommend just just apply it on the whole surface put your cooler on top and you're good to go um, so in the what do you have exactly in the in the bag? So you have the syringe, you have two apply uh, two application stuff. Yeah, you have the you don't have the CPU. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, not. Yeah, that would be would be awesome. Oh, you just have the the syringe. Uh, in this case, with 11 grams, we will have uh, uh, different um, uh, like uh, fillings, um, like 1.5 gram, which is like a uh, 1.5 milliliter, which is around 5.5 gram and uh, also uh, a little bit less for guys who just want to 
to build one PC, right? You don't have to have 10 grams of tonal paste if you just want to have, uh, if you want to cover one CPU, right? It would be a waste of money. So, uh, actually, are you planning on making uh, uh, one big steering for the overclockers? Because that, we know that these guys use a lot, but they can maybe just buy multiple ones. The thing is, I cannot, uh, from my experience over the years, um, according to tonal paste, I cannot. Uh, I cannot really recommend to have big things unless you use it in a short period of time. Um, I cannot recommend that you buy 50 grams or 100 and keep it in your in your uh, uh, in your in the bench box or in the bench box for let's say three or four years. Um, the stuff is not getting better over the years, so uh, uh, it's not like wine. <laughs> no, it's it's not really like wine. So um, yeah, if it, well, like for me. I want to have like a biggest wrench because I use a lot of the repairs, right? I can easily use uh, 10 grams a weekend. So if I have a, a like say a 30 gram paste, that for me is very handy. Uh, but if you if you think about yeah, maybe I do two PC systems a year, should I buy it? Then I would say no. Just buy the, the small syringe every time you um, you get a PC because then um, you will get like a, a fresh filled product with a, the best quality. And you can be sure that it's very easy to, to apply because over the time, if you, if you keep a, a thermal paste for 10 years, it's obviously... It's going to dry up at some time yeah, anyway. Yeah, it's obviously not as good as on the first day, right? Mm. So, so rather, if you, if you rarely build PCs, get a, a smaller amount and... Um, each and time. buy some more after if you want, uh, if yeah. you want some more. Yeah. Actually, there's some uh, comments on the live. Uh, one from Tiala says, I can't believe the regular provider regular provider of thermal paste could not come up with this in so many years. Uh, to be honest, I'm still impressed we can invent or actually bundle new things in, the, in this area. I would have expected that it was pretty much like a, a my, uh, an, an history of like 0.01% more or stuff like this. Yeah, I, actually, I expected the same, to be honest. I was expected to be the like... like maybe like the same like the top product but then when I got the new paste and um, I wanted to check like how how consistent is my my testing machine uh, I tested and the first the first test was like really really good like better than any other paste and I was like something's wrong no that's <laughs> not right so usually when then when things are too good to be true they usually are right mm -hmm. so I remounted and I had like almost the same and then I remounted and I had still the same. So I did like six testings and I was like, okay, I think it's fine. <laughs> because then I retested other paste and they were still like performing the same level. So yeah, I'm actually, I was actually surprised as well. So in a, in a very good way. So yeah. So you're, it's not your own company, but you're actually no, it's, helping it's them. Not, it's not at all my company. I'm just, I just got in touch with the, with the guy who's, who owns the company and offered to like help in the, um, in the to get it, to get it into the right direction because um, like, like a consultant pretty much like yeah, a consultant like, about like, thermal based exactly because um, uh, he has like all the, the contacts and knowledge about the stuff uh, from the industry um, uh, but I, I you know as an extreme overclocker. I know the, like the overclocking scene and what the guys are thinking and what, what the, the people in the overclocking scene are looking for. So I just helped him to get it, the stuff into the to the to the um, to the right direction. Yeah. Well, that's good. As I said on the chat, I'm actually in, like in, in impressed about that because I never expect to have any more uh, improvement in it. Me neither. Me neither. I always thought like, yeah, the top's gonna be the it's gonna be the same. There's for gonna like, be one more thing that you select from a catalog, and then yeah, 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 it's gonna be the same for like 10 years, but surprisingly not. Yeah. Uh, one last question about the thermal paste because I want to talk a bit more about the CPU pod that you are yeah. laying right there, and I want actually to talk a lot yeah. about that. Um, what are what are the uh, like the compositions? Uh, I don't want us to give the receipt, but uh, what do you expect? In, like the cheap one and the uh, like more expensive well, I, one. Well, I can give you like an, a raw estimate of what kind of stuff you have in thermal paste. Like, um, yeah. Uh, so, so what's so the so estimate so first, and then we're gonna. Take so the question. <laughs> I will just uh, answer the, the question first um, because of it's, it's still in the same okay. topic. Um, uh, Cooling God wanted to know if I tested other pastes. Actually, I tested every single paste which is available on the market. I, I, how I many really, of them is that? Like uh, sixty-six 
I've, I found available in Germany 66 different products, thermal paste, and I tested every single one of them. And I didn't get like samples, I bought them myself at a store just to, be, to make sure nobody's like sending me some weird stuff, which sometimes happens. Uh, if, if you do if you do reviews, so and you know those stuff. So you went to you went online. Uh, yeah, I think on Case King, say okay, order, 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 exactly, order. Exactly. Yeah, I just I just, I just ordered everything I found available in Germany. So um, that's so that that's how I can can also refer to what's included in the thermal paste because then I I had like the, the whole range of everything available and uh, I could check what what kind of ingredients do they have and how do they pre perform. So. Um, Uh, uh, there is, for example, there is a cool laboratory. They're making the liquid metal stuff, mm -hmm. and they have a paste. It's called li liquid copper. And so it's like liquid metal with copper grains. No, it's or? it's uh, it's basically um, like very small copper, uh, like, like 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 a layer or like, not like, like like grinded copper, like very very <laughs> small pieces of copper, and mixed together with some kind of oil. And I thought, well, copper has a great um, thermal conductivity, right? Mm -hmm. So I thought this this could actually this could actually perform very well. Um, so I tested it, and surprisingly, it was the worst paste on the market. And then I thought, why do they even have the paste? So I asked them, and they replied, yeah, well, this is mainly not made for uh, for. Uh, like the, the PC industries, this is like a, a industrial product. Made so, like much higher load. It's it's, 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 a, it's a high temperature uh, okay. thermal paste. It can handle up to 600 degrees. Okay, and that's other something we'll never <coughs> see on the computer. Yeah, exactly. And others, um, uh, other products are made made for the PC, and they perform much better at the at the thermal at the uh, temperature range. So, um, then the next stuff is usually uh, called silver grease. Um, And, and is that the same one we have, like the Arctic silver? That no, that's, some, that's something different. Um, uh, silver grease is like uh, from Alpha Cool, for example. Uh, it's like a huge syringe. It's very, very fluent. It's very easy to apply. Probably the easiest product to apply on the market, really. Um, but it's not performing good. Okay. So, and uh, then you have ceramic-based products. So you have like ceramic powder mixed up with some kind of uh, silicon oil. And uh, those are like not really good anymore they were they were quite good like uh, let's say 10 years ago and they are heavily used in the, in the normal electronic industry all the white stuff you can see like on some transistors and all that mm -hmm. that's always ceramic based and although some of them they <coughs> can just add some glue in it to just be like a thermal paste and glue at the same time yeah exactly mm -hmm. and then uh, then you have the uh, the metal based oh that's good <coughs> the metal based so they then, have like metal stuff yeah, you, have the, you have the metal based uh, product and you, you have to know that actually every paste I tested is not electrical conductive uh, apart from the liquid metal and the liquid copper everything is not electrical conductive even if it's silver paste or metal based paste and metal based means um, you have aluminium oxide usually or born, born nitrate I think it's called in, in, in English and um, also mixed together with some silicon Those are like the average and above average products are usually like aluminium oxide, uh, like uh, I think Prolimatech. Proli Prolimatech. Okay. Prolimatech. Is, yeah, they are only using um, aluminium oxide based pastes. Okay. And um, then you have uh, uh, like um, the the really the, the the really silver based means like very very tiny parts of silver, like the Arctic silver. You know, mm -hmm. it's also only an average paste. It's really not that good. Even though Arctic Silver has been around for, for ages, it's really not good anymore. But that's not their core business either. So Yeah, So and then you have um, diamond-based paste, uh, pastes, which are interest, interesting for sure. Because if you, take, uh, if you take a look at the table like of the thermal conductivity, um, diamonds are made out of carbon, right? So, uh, and uh, I think, in theory, the, uh, the conductivity is something around... Uh, 600 I think and uh, if you have uh, copper I think it's around 400 and yeah so those are quite good as well but they are very expensive the, the, yeah, the diamond, diamond paste, paste are the most expensive on the market but they are not surprisingly not the best that's just the more expensive they, they are really really like almost on top Uh, but not the best. Like there is the uh, some kind of carate one. I can like um, diamond seven. It's called I think. Um, 
it's, it's a great product, but it's very hard to apply. I think it's, it's the hardest to apply on the market. You cannot even call it the paste anymore. It's like it's like almost like sold it. It's really really hard to apply and thermal conductivity is good, but it's not the best and it's very expensive. So actually, it's not worth really taking. So you have the to find yeah. the, like the best wrench in the uh, yeah in and that. yeah. Well, this is also um, partially metal based. Say like this. Okay. But only partially. Yeah. Well, let's say that you mix it with the stuff that we do, we don't want to know. Uh, do I have, will I have any issue uh, passing the custom with that, or there's no. some weird ingredients in that? No, or? good. No, Perfect. it's that's like totally fine. We have uh, safety data, uh, safety, safety. How's it called? Safety sheet, safety data sheet. Uh, so good, but don't lay lo your kids play with it. That's the only thing, right? No, uh, as always with uh, most of the uh, yeah uh, electronic st electronic stuff. Well, uh, thank you very much for presenting that. Um, All right, let's get that away. Yeah, just get it back in the. In the in the in the bag, um, we're gonna watch the trailer uh, and come back right away with some of the questions. Uh, we have uh, we had a few questions on the live chat. We're gonna take them back right when we came. Welcome back, guys. We uh, have a, a slight issue during the break. We're actually trying to refill one of the glass. Oh yeah, there's <laughs> we're actually to refill one of the one of the glass we had, and actually, uh, I feel so bad that the water came all the way on the keyboard and so on. So we are back. We are still at the uh, HW Bot World Tour right here in Gamers Assembly in France. Uh, I'm Profman from Overclicking TV, and this is Roman uh, from Germany. Hey, guys. Mm -hmm. Ah, ah, man. Well, Always happen during the break. I mean, this break is like 15 seconds. When we do take break, we don't want to put ads. But actually, it's like, yeah, 15 seconds to just drink something. Drink something or... I, I still, I always drink in between because seriously, we're talking so much. It's like... Yeah, even my mouth is getting dry. I think that, yeah. It's a, it's a live show. You want to come up? Hello, sure, come here. Uh, go take a seat and come in the back. That's going to be fine. So... Uh, thank you, Roman. We did talk about like uh, well, some kind of thermal paste, but what I want to uh, to see is your CPU part. Before that, yeah. we're gonna take the last question on the live chat, and then we're gonna spend as many time as we want, as many time as we want for the uh, for the uh, for the CPU girl. CPU. Part. This is going into the outtakes, even though it was not even an outtake because it's live. Oh boy. Uh. Okay, uh, questions from the chat. Um, what's inside the T Grizzly? We said it, there's the, the thermal paste and so on. Uh, Jumper118 says, I use white stuff for binning. I don't have a clue at what he was referring. But uh, I think he was he was uh, referring to when I, when I was oh, referring yeah, about the color. Yeah. And if you have a white paste, it's the ceramic base, uh, base paste. Hey, Ru, come on. Yeah. Just try. Uh. Or do you want there to in the middle? Yeah, in the middle. That's going to be easier yeah. for the mic. Yeah. So, uh, hey so guys, this people is people uh, watching. Hey, hey Ru. Uh, you come from Czech Republic, right? Yeah, Czech Republic. Yeah. Welcome here on the late night show. We can spend as many time as, as we want here. We have people asking questions right oh, there. Uh, like uh, Xiala say, ha, 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 ha. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's probably the, yeah, the best comment. So today. far. Um, best content. That was a few questions. Um, is it toxic as a thermal paste? No, it's not toxic, but you should not eat that. Always the same thing. Well, if you consume a lot, <laughs> you, you will still have a lot of issues, right? But why would you do that? I mean... I'm just referring to Darwin again. <laughs> Some stuff you just shouldn't do. And we had the one last question from Jumper118. Can you make a chocolate favorite one so I can lick it off the CPU? Well, actually, actually, you can use almost everything as uh, for, for heat Toothpaste. transfer. We, we, we even tried like ketchup or You tried mustard. ketchup? Um, How does it perform regarding like the, the regular thing paste? is like... like <laughs> okay, guys, we're going to spend 10 minutes more on the thermal paste again. <laughs> actually, actually, at first... Better than nothing. Yeah, like we, we even used like the sun protective uh, <laughs> cream stuff. Yeah. Because any kind of paste... 
which which feels Transfers like yeah, better than yeah, air. Yeah, exactly. If it fills the gap between the cooler yeah. and the CPU, yeah. it actually helps. But the, the issue is almost all those products they they dry out, and if they dry out, like their the, the contact is gone and then they suck. Like for ketchup, ketchup was was actually doing good at first, but after <laughs> five like, minutes, after, yeah, like after five minutes when it hit, uh, when it hit like a uh, high temperature, yeah, the, the performance was not was not that good anymore to say it like that. But yeah, you can lick it off. I mean, if, if you're happy with that. But I'm not sure. Usually you I maybe change the, the tone pace after three years. I'm not sure if I would lick off ketchup after three years. But maybe, that's, that's uh, up to you. Maybe someone wants to make like a chocolate fondue while he's benching. <laughs> <laughs> that would be crazy. Well, have you tried Nutella? Yes. No. <laughs> but that's a good suggestion for the next test. Yeah, it's like yeah. a lot of oil inside. So that, that could be okay. <laughs> yes, it could actually be okay. Maybe, maybe it has uh, some nice smell as well for the room. Oh boy. Okay, that's enough for the, uh, <laughs> that's enough for the terminal pace. Um, I think I've got a blue screen, so I'm gonna go. Okay, go, <laughs> go back. <laughs> and it's a blue screen! 10 points. <laughs> okay, so I will, I will <laughs> use the trailer once again, just because I want to refill my glasses again. <laughs> We're gonna go back speak about the CPU. <laughs> <laughs> there was one more question, I think. Uh, there is a question from <coughs> Cooling God, did the paste <coughs> been used by um, by others also, yeah. You say um, Dankop, right? Dan, Dankop from Germany, uh, the very well-known overclocker, like ranked first on HWBOT. He, he has been using it for like a few weeks already. I gave him like an early sample to check uh, to check to have his opinion as well, uh, what he thinks about it. So he made some uh, some tests and for him it's... Um, it worked much better than the stuff you used before. So, so you could he could improve by like 30 megahertz on load. And because at this at this level, like when you're to, like ranking yeah, in the top it, ten, it that could make a difference. Right. Because the thing is, he, he, uh, the the hassle he used, he had to delete it, like take off the the, the heat spreader, and he he where he used it was between the the chip and the heat spreader, and that's where where he gained the megahertz. But okay, let's let's finally go over <laughs> to the uh, the CPU part. CPU part, yeah.